Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2024 release, It's What's Inside. Now, this is a Netflix film, so when I'm putting this up, it's already available on Netflix. Um, I do recommend this one lightly. Uh, I, I did end up having a good enough time with it. I wanted a lot more out of it than I ended up getting, but that said, there are a decent amount of positives to this, which I will talk about in this no-spoiler review. So this film is written and directed by Greg Jardin. I haven't seen that this person's done any feature-length films before, so honestly, for a first feature-length film, this is a very good start. A very, very good start, actually. Uh, the fact that I thought it was pretty solid and enjoyed a decent amount of it speaks volumes for a first uh, feature film. So this individual, I think they are going places. Really, really going places. So synopsis of what's inside. It's about a group of friends who haven't seen each other in quite some time, and they're getting together because one of the friends is going to be getting married. So they're all going to hang out at this very odd, very artsy, uh, over-the-top, ridiculously decorated mansion that this friend who's getting married has, he owns, because his mother had owned it and she had passed away. And it's, um, it's very weird. Like, you'll see what I'm talking about. But the great thing about that is it keeps... The visual is very interesting. Uh, set design is very cool for that reason. But anyway, so they get together there, and one of the friends who shows up last, who all of them haven't seen even longer ago than the others, uh, shows up with a device. A device that he's been working on, his team has been working on, to uh, allow people the ability to switch bodies. Which, this is where the concept gets very interesting. So he proposes, hey, we're hanging out, we're going to have some fun, why don't we mess around with this and play a game? Basically a game where he switches people's bodies, and then people have to guess who is in whose body, and no one can say who they are or try to, you know, give too much of an indication, and people just have to see if they can guess it. Well, it is a horror film, so if things end up going wrong, and uh, there wouldn't be much to the film if everyone just switched bodies and then people were just like, oh, you're this person, you're this person. And, hey, everyone had a lot of fun. Oh, okay, see ya. Uh, so things go wrong. Things go very wrong. And it's about how wrong do these things go, where do we end up in the end, and who's in whose body, basically. So that's all I'm going to give you synopsis-wise. Um, great concept. I love the concept. Some of the execution I really enjoyed. Some of the execution I thought could have been done a lot better. And some of it just doesn't appeal to me particularly. And I'll talk about that. Uh, the very first scene is kind of funny, uh, but then turns to being annoying. And the joke overstays its welcome. That's one of the big problems I end up having with this film. It's summed up in the very first scene of it. They try to go comedy. This is supposed to be like a horror comedy. They try to go comedy at many points. And it's not funny in the first place. Whatever jokes they're trying to make are at best, mildly funny, and they keep going with it. They just keep de beating the dead horse after they've already delivered it, and it just doesn't work. Like, the jokes don't work in the first place for the most part, and then they keep belaboring the point, and you're just like, okay, I got it. I understand what you're trying to do. Let's cut this scene down, please. Uh, and for that reason, it does end up having some pacing issues here and there, although overall, I don't think it has pacing issues as a whole. Uh, there are these little segments where you're kind of like, yeah, this scene is just going on too long and they're really trying to sell this joke too hard and it's just not working. So unfortunately, that's at play. So for uh, from a comedy standpoint, if you really are looking for good comedy from this film, knowing it's a horror comedy, you're looking in the wrong place. It's about the concept and it's about the horror in it and the interesting ideas of where they decide to take things. If you're looking for the comedy, it's no good. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now, the comedy is not good. It's poorly written as far as the comedy goes. Uh, all of the characters are dialed up a bit much, and I, that ends up getting annoying. You do have these characters that are just very over the top in who they are. Now, I think maybe that was partially a choice so that it would be a little bit easier for audiences to tell who's in whose body at any given time. But then they end up employing a visual aspect that kind of shows you who's in whose body at certain times. Because there are times where they don't really want you to know. It's a little too early. And then at other times they're like, okay, now we're going to reveal to you visually who is in whose body. So 
The characters didn't need to be dialed up a whole lot. Um, I can understand why it was done, but it, they just become annoying, especially certain characters because they're annoying. They're annoying people, and and when they go too hard on it, it's just it it gets annoying. So there were things that I didn't like about this film from an annoying aspect. Uh, there are a lot of interesting visual choices with camera work and other things that end up getting edited into it. I will say that it's very inventive from a directorial standpoint and cinematography as well. And the lighting. They did a really cool thing using a lot of interesting colors in this film. And colors are used in an interesting way that ties into the actual story. But then it's also very interesting from a visual standpoint. So between the really cool camera work, some really interesting frame shots some interesting camera movements, and the colors, it's very visually appealing. Also, it's snappy a lot of times. Like I was saying, overall, the pacing's not bad. Overall, the pacing's actually pretty good. It's just those certain scenes that just go a little too long, but it moves. It's snappy. It's actually a little bit frantic, too frantic, in my opinion, at times, that makes it seem it's very like it's very much for a... ADHD type of brain. When I was watching this, I started thinking to myself, this feels a lot like a Casey Rocket comedy set. If anyone doesn't know who Casey Rocket is, just look him up on YouTube. Just look up like Casey Rocket stand up and you'll you'll see what I mean. It's like ADHD humor. Um, like the film ends up feeling kind of like frantic and fast paced like that at times. And it, it's a little much for people like me who have anxiety issues and are for the most part introverted. So you get overstimulated, but I can see this really landing for certain people with that aspect. The score is very over the top and it's cranked up way louder than the dialogue. I hate that. The dialogue itself also goes up and down, which is another problem. And sometimes it's actually really hard to hear what's even being said. So we got a few problems here. You're beating people over the head with the score. I hate that. I think it's totally uncalled for. And it just makes it overly dramatic, overly ridiculous, overly whatever's going on in the scene at that point. And it's just not needed. It just comes off as stupid to me. Um, then you're having the volume of the music cranked up so high that it ends up drowning out some dialogue. Then the dialogue itself fluctuates in the volume level. So at some point you're like, totally good. I can hear you perfectly fine. And at other moments, it's like the character's whispering and you can't hear anything. You literally have to be like, do I need to put my like ear on the TV to hear what this person's saying? So audio issues, big problem. Score, big problem in my opinion. Composition of the score, not necessarily bad. It's just the volume of it. Uh, there's a lot of cool use of color changes. Like I was saying, the color lighting, very, very cool. Color changes are very interesting in this film. There's a lot of cool inspired stuff in this. Once the game is in full, sp in full swing is when it becomes its most engaging. Because at that point, we've gotten to the heart of what the story is. It's, not, it's no longer just characters trying to be funny and being ridiculous and annoying. It's, okay... Let's get together. Let's focus. This is what we're here for with the movie is actually getting some good entertainment, not all of what that was, basically. Um, the set is very interesting, like I already said, with all these weird um, art pieces, which I think were put together very well. Like, the set looks great, but and I love the concept of having it in just this, like, really weird artsy house. I would love to see more films, you know, set in a place like this. Because there's just a lot more you can do, not just from a standpoint of interesting visuals, but it helps kind of play into the horror of things when things go wrong. Uh, and in the end, the ending is okay. I didn't hate the ending. I didn't love the ending. I was like, it, it's an okay ending. It, it, it's fine for me. It does get belabored a little bit too much. Um, and in the, you know, really, this is a, a film about people always wanting to be like someone else which should come as no shock to anyone because a body-switching film, uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be about every single time, pretty much. Especially in 2024, that's what it's going to be about. So it doesn't do anything, like, huge with, like, subtext or anything like that. It's mainly just about where do they take the story, who's in whose body, and what, how are things going to shake out in the end. And it is interesting, so I do, I do recommend it, but... 
it's a lighter recommend for me than a lot of films that I've recommended this year. So out of five stars, half stars in play, I'm going to give this one a very solid three-star rating. So check out what's inside. It's what's inside. Um, and yeah, uh, Greg Jarden, going places, I think, for sure. But anyway, uh, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I greatly appreciate that. I do have memberships available as well. There's a link in the description. If that's something you might be interested in, very low pricing. Um, hit the notification bell button if you want to know when I'm putting up new videos and thumbs up for me if you want me, want me to do better with the YouTube algorithm with this video and all my videos. But regardless, thank you so much for taking your time to watch this. I really do appreciate that. And until next time, keep it brutal.